As I mentioned, we are not going to deal, be dealing with amplitude in this class so much, but wavelength and frequency are going to be very important for us. And so I'm going to give you your first mathematical equation here so that we can deal with wavelength and frequency. There's an equation that links wavelength and frequency mathematically, and it is this equation, C equals lambda nu, where C is a constant. So let's think about what this means for lambda and nu, for wavelength and frequency. If C is held constant, and wavelength increases, what has to happen to the frequency for C to remain constant? If wavelength increases, what happens to frequency? Frequency has to decrease, right? Because as this increases, this variable decreases to maintain that constant. Well, if wavelength increases while frequency decreases, does that mean they are directly proportional or inversely proportional? They are inversely proportional, they are inversely related, because as one increases, the other decreases inversely related, according to that equation. So let's expand this a little bit. C is the, well, let's, the, let's before I tell you what it is, and you probably already know what goes in, these, what goes in this blank, let's think about this equation in terms of the units. Let's, let's figure out what the units of C must be. If lambda is a wave length, it has to be a length, right? So let's assume that the length we're measuring for that wave is in meters. And then nu, the frequency, is in inverse seconds. There's lambda, the wavelength, and there's nu, the inverse seconds. What units of measurement does C, the constant, have to be in? And you can see this is meters divided by seconds, right? So notice what the units of C, that constant, must be. It's meters per second. Meters per second. That's, that's a speed, isn't it? How many meters per second? Well, if you're moving a certain number of meters per second, that's a speed or a velocity. Since we're talking about electromagnetic radiation, we have just derived the units for the constant that relates the wavelength and frequency, and we end up with a velocity. We get a speed. And sure enough, C is the speed. Now, we often say it's the speed of light, but in fact, it's the speed of all electromagnetic radiation of which light is one small subset. So, speed of light. Because it's the wavelength per frequency unit. And we say that it's the speed of light in a vacuum because if you're in a vacuum, that means that there are no particles, there's no media through which you have to travel that can affect the speed of light or interfere with it. And so if you have absolutely nothingness in a vacuum, then C, the value for the speed of light, is that value, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth, and there's meters per second right there. There's our speed. I'd like to point out to you that we are going to four sig figs in this number. You may have learned only three in your previous science courses. You may have learned to round this to 3.00 times 10 to the eighth, but we need all four of those sig figs so that we don't throw away our precision, so that we don't limit our precision. Now, if you look on the back of your periodic table again, you'll see that we've given you this value. So you don't have to remember that. You'll, you'll be provided that. Okay? That's the constant C, and it is the speed of light in a vacuum. There's lambda, that's lambda, the, what is lambda? Lambda is the wavelength in meters. And nu is nu, which is the frequency. The number of waves 
of electromagnetic radiation that pass by a point in one second. And the units of frequency is in inverse seconds. And there's another note that says inverse seconds is sometimes also called hertz. So on your radio dial, you might know about uh, kilohertz and megahertz. That's the number for the radio station. So 99.9 .9 megahertz, mega is a million hertz, a million cycles per second. So what the numbers on your radio actually represent, it is the frequency of the radio waves that that radio is tuned to receive. Okay. So now we've talked about waves, we've talked about the properties of waves, and now we have an equation. C is the constant, which has that value, equals the wavelength times the frequency, lambda nu. C equals lambda nu. And now that we have an equation, and now that we know what lambda and nu mean, because we talked about it up here, you think we're going to get to do some math? I bet we are. Now that we have an equation, we can do some math with it. So that's on our next page. Okay, here we have example A, and example A is going to let us use some of this math. So what is the frequency of light emitted by a laser used in the treatment of vascular skin lesions if its wavelength is 532 nanometers? Well, I'm being asked for the frequency of light, so that's asking for nu, the frequency. I'm given the wavelength, lambda, but unfortunately, I'm not being given the lambda, the wavelength, in meters. I'm give, being given the wavelength in nanometers. So I'm going to have to do a conversion from nanometers to meters first before I can then plug it into my equation. So with that in mind, I would like for you to do this problem. Write the equation that you're going to use. Algebraically manipulate it first to solve for the variable that you're looking for. Then plug in the numbers. But when you get to wavelength, you'll have to do a side calculation, a conversion first to get meters before you can plug it in. Go for it, and when you're done, resume the video and I'll work through it with you. Okay, so first of all, we know that the equation that we're going to use is the one that gives us frequency if we have wavelength, and that's this equation right here, the one we just learned. Speed of light, constant. C equals lambda, the wavelength, times nu, the frequency of radiation. I'm looking for frequency, so I'm going to rearrange this algebraically to solve for frequency. Lambda has to be divided on both sides. And I get C over lambda equals nu. Now I can start to plug in values. So C over lambda, lambda I know that C is 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's in the numerator. That's for C. And lambda is the wavelength in meters, but I don't have it in meters. So I need to do some side math over here to do that conversion. 532 nanometers times, and gives us meters, right? So nanometers goes on the bottom. 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometers, a billion, that is. For one meter. And when I do this math and round to three sig figs, 5.32 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So that's how many meters I have, and now I can plug that in to my equation for the lambda, the wavelength. Notice that the meters here, which is in the numerator of this term right here, and the meters in the denominator here are going to cancel. And look at the units they leave me. They're going to leave me with a seconds in the denominator of this term and a 1 in the numerator. Well, we've seen that before, right? That's the inverse seconds. That's the units for frequency, which is really good because that's what I'm looking for. So if I do this math and round to three sig figs, I get 5.64. times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. Now that's an enormous number. Look, it's times 10 to the 14th, a large exponent there. Does it make sense to have a very large number for a frequency? 
Yes, when we're talking about electromagnetic radiation, particularly in the visible range, the frequencies are going to be very high, around 10 to the 14th magnitude. And that is because there are many of those waves that are passing by a point in space every second. The waves are very small. Look, they're only 532 nanometers. Then you're going to have a lot of them that can pass by every second. So that, that does make sense to have a frequency in the 10 to the 14th range. It has the units here, the inverse seconds for frequency, and there we go. I have one more problem, sample problem for you here. And it's basically going to be just working backward from what we just did. Now we're asked to calculate the wavelength. This is the lambda of light in nanometers. So once you do a calculation to determine your wavelength, you're going to then have to do a final calculation to convert to nanometers if you're given that frequency. So we're given the frequency. We're looking for the wavelength. And once you get the wavelength, you'll have to do a final conversion. So give that one a shot, and then when you're done, resume the video. All right, here we know that the calculation to give us wavelength, if we have frequency, is going to use this equation, C equals lambda nu. The constant for the speed of light equals the wavelength times the frequency. The wavelength in meters times the frequency in inverse seconds. I am calculating wavelength, so I'm going to rearrange this equation algebraically to solve for the variable I'm looking for, the wavelength, the lambda. So that is then C over nu equals lambda. Now I can start plugging in these values, lambda equals, and I'm going to plug in C. in the numerator, and frequency now goes in the denominator. The frequency is here, the units uh, didn't make it on the same line, they're over there, the inverse second, 1.76 times 10 to the 15 inverse seconds, equals, and this is going to give me my lambda, my wavelength. How does it work out? Let's, let's take a look at the units. Here I have seconds in the denominator of this term, and it's going to cancel out with the seconds in the denominator of this term. So that inverse second is going to cancel out. It's going to leave me with the units of meters. Does that make sense? It should because I'm calculating a wavelength, right? So a unit of meters is a good wavelength. I will eventually have to convert it to nanometers, but out of this equation, meters is appropriate. So I'm going to do this math, and I get 1.70, three sig figs, right? Take a moment here. This is what my calculator told me right here. Notice how the calculator threw away a significant zero right after the seven? Because your calculator is a mathematician. Your calculator is not a scientist. And mathematicians say, you know, if you have a zero at the end, eh, we can just throw it away and it doesn't change things. A chemist says we keep our significant zeros because they tell us something scientifically important about the precision of that number and the confidence to which we know it. So we need three sig figs, so we can't just put 1.7. We have to put 1.70 when we convert this to scientific notation. How many spaces? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is to the negative seventh meters. Oh, I shouldn't cross, I shouldn't circle that. I'm not done with my answer yet. Am I? Why not? Because the question specifically asks for it in nanometers, so I've got to do a conversion here. Meters to nanometers, right? So one meter is one times ten to the ninth nanometers. And that will give me, if I do this math, I will get this number, 170 nanometers. So don't just put a de decimal there and think it makes the, that zero significant and then call it a day. We don't like to do that.
We don't like to have a decimal that does not have a digit on either side. If I put a decimal there and I put a zero after it, then I have four sig figs, and that's no good. So I really have to convert this to scientific notation. It becomes 1.70 times 10 to the 2 nanometers. Now I have three sig figs, and I have correct decimal formatting with a digit on both sides of the decimal. And there we go. That is my answer, not this one. Okay. And there you are. So that's how to use the C equals lambda nu equation to calculate either the wavelength or the frequency of light or any sort of electromagnetic radiation. And I've also thrown in some length conversions so that you can do that either before you plug in the length into a problem or after you get a length out of that equation that you may have to do that conversion just for some extra practice.